Our main enemy is Al-Qaeda and its affiliates. Their allies choose their victims indiscriminately. They murder the innocent to advance a focused and clear ideology. They seek to establish a radical Islamic caliphate so they can impose a brutal new order on unwilling people. It would help them gain new recruits, new resources. It would cause them to believe they could strike free nations at their choice. He pulled up a piece of paper off his desk. He said, I just got this memo from the Secretary of Defense's office that says we're going to attack and destroy the governments in, in seven countries in five years. We're going to start with Iraq, and then we're going to move to Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. I said, seven, seven countries in five years. I said, is that a classified memo? He said, yes. <laughs> Failure in Iraq should be unacceptable to the civilized world. The risks are enormous. So after an extensive review, I ordered a new strategy that is dramatically different from the one we were pursuing before. I listen to our military commanders. I listen to politicians from both sides of the aisle. I made a decision. Our enemy, the enemies of freedom, love chaos. Out of that chaos, they could find new safe havens. These enemies have embraced a cult of death. They are determined to bring days of even greater destruction on our people. They seek the world's most dangerous weapons. Against this kind of enemy, there is only one effective response. We must go on the offense, stay on the offense, and take the fight to them. It's a pretty stunning thing. You mean the purpose of the military is to, to, to start wars and change governments? It's not to sort of deter conflict? We're going to invade countries? And, I, I, you know, my mind was spinning. And uh, I put that aside. It was like a nugget that you hold on to. This country was taken over by a group of people with a policy coup. Wolfowitz and Cheney and Rumsfeld and you could name a half dozen other collaborators from the Project for a New American Century. They wanted us to destabilize the Middle East, turn it upside down make it under our control. It went back to those comments in 1991. Now, did anybody ever tell you that? Was there a national dialogue on this? Did senators and congressmen stand up and denounce this plan? Was there a full-fledged American debate on it? Absolutely not. And there still isn't. And that's why we're failing in Iraq. Because Iran and Syria know about the plan. All you have to do is read the, the, the 
Weekly Standard and, and in, listen to Bill Crystal, and he blabbermouths it all over the world. Richard Pearl the same way. They could hardly wait to finish Iraq so they could move into Syria. It was like a laydown. Oh, our legions are going to go in there. This wasn't what the American people voted George Bush into office. Well, they didn't actually vote him into office, but it wasn't what many of the people who... It wasn't what he campaigned on. He campaigned on a humble foreign policy, the most arrogant foreign policy in American history. He campaigned on no peacekeeping, no nation building, and here he is with Afghanistan and Iraq. It's astonishing. So the root of the problem is not how many troops are in Iraq. Please believe me. Don't be mad, if you're a Democrat, at your Democratic congressman because they can't reduce the troops and frustrate the president. That's not the issue. And if you're a Republican, don't be mad at the Democrats because they're fussing with the troops. Whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, if you're an American, you ought to be concerned about the strategy of the United States in this region. What is our aim? What is our purpose? Why are we there? Why are Americans dying in this region? That is the issue. Is it ever reasonable to restrict constitutional freedoms in the name of fighting terrorism? Um, in our opinion, no. Just this week, our military forces announced the capture of one of Al-Qaeda's top Iraqi leaders. He helped to form what Al-Qaeda calls the Islamic State in Iraq, an attempt to replicate what the Taliban had created in Afghanistan.